I could have watched Joel Schumacher's Batman and Robin three times in a row while smoking a 10 pack of cigarettes and I would have still lost less brain cells than I did scrolling through Ken Ham's Twitter in order to make this video. Now if you don't know who Ken Ham is, he's everybody's favourite Australian creationist, best known for his creation museum and his Ark Encounter exhibition. We'll talk about them another time, shall we? He's also quite well known for having debated Bill Nye on the subject of creationism, and that's where I first heard of him, and I immediately followed him on Twitter. Now, if you're not following him on Twitter, then, well, good, good for you. But you might be missing out on some humour just because of how stupid some of his tweets can be, so for your convenience, I've collected some of my personal favourites here, and I'm gonna give you a few of my thoughts. So let's just do this chronologically, shall we? How can secularists talk about morality? Without an absolute basis, where do they draw the lines? Who draws the lines? Ultimately, it fails. Now, Ken, I've talked about this before, but objective moral truths don't exist. And even if they did, I don't think they'd align with what's written in your holy book. Saying that I can't talk about morality is a little bit rich, don't you think, coming from somebody whose holy book condones slavery and the stoning of homosexuals. But oh, there's more. How do secularists determine right from wrong? Bill Nye told me a consensus of the tribe, but then it's all subjective. Secularism fails. Except no, it doesn't really, does it? Saying that my morals are based upon subjectivity is not an insult. Okay, my morals are based upon reason and experience and knowing what will work best for society. Yours are based upon absolute truths written in an ancient book by people who didn't know that the Earth orbits the Sun. All humans are one race, one family, and we need to be tolerant of each other even though there will be many differing beliefs. We need to be tolerant of each other even though there will be many differing beliefs. There's a name for that, Ken. It's called secularism. Most evolutionists believe evolution because they were taught it, was in their textbooks. They don't want to know how fictional it really is. Well, atrocious grammar and the fact that you can't really know anything without being taught it aside, this is quite a hypocritical statement. Tell me, Ken, why are most people who are religious, religious? Oh yeah, that's right, because they were taught it and it was in their textbooks, the Bible. But here's an important difference, okay? Let's say that tomorrow or next week, some kind of crazy natural disaster wipes out every single remnant of any kind of study of any kind of human in history and somehow it seems to erase all our memories as well. Basically, humans have to start completely from scratch with no knowledge whatsoever of their past. Give it enough time and once again, people will stumble across fossils and biology will become advanced and evolution will once again be discovered. But how likely is it that Christianity in the form it is today would be able to be reconstructed from physical evidence? It's hard to accept intelligent people believe in a fairy tale like evolution but it's because of the hardness of their hearts towards our creator. Oh, you mean like when God hardened the heart of the Pharaoh and then punished the Pharaoh for having a hardened heart? I've got some news for you, Ken. I don't believe in evolution because I hate God. I believe in evolution because evolution is true and it has significant physical evidence to support it. Bathtub arcs may be cute, but they're dangerous. Teach kids the truth about the ark. Bring them to ark encounter. Ken, mate. Please don't talk about wrongly educating children with misinformation and how dangerous that can be. Okay, if there's one person on this entire planet that just can't talk about that, it's you. Also, what a shameless plug, man. You can do better than that. And here we have Ken going on a bizarre rant trying to prove that the story of Noah is meant to be taken literally. Well, you know what, Ken? I agree with you. You've actually done us a favour. You see, most reasonable Christians try to sort of circumnavigate around the ridiculousness of the story of Noah by saying, well, it's not meant to be taken literally, it's just a metaphor. But what you've done here is proved that it is supposed to be taken literally. I mean, there's references to it in the New Testament, like you pointed out. And so what you're proving is that Christianity is completely ridiculous, even if you only accept the New Testament as truth. Most of the fossil record is not the record of evolution over millions of years, but is the record of the global flood of Noah's day. Ah yes, the hundreds of millions of year old fossils that died in the flood of Noah 6,000 years ago. Wait, what? If one takes God's word as written in Genesis, the six days of creation are literally approximately 24 hour days. Millions of years does not fit with the Bible. I would agree with you. Probably in a different way. Secularists will believe anything, even aliens, as long as they don't believe in the biblical God as they reject sin and need for salvation. What? Ken, the possibility of aliens existing is astronomically higher than the possibility of your Christian God existing. Okay, look, assuming that you don't believe that we live on a flat earth or something, which honestly I wouldn't even put it past you if you did, but let's assume that you don't. Okay, we live in a universe which is filled with billions of galaxies, each in turn filled with billions of stars with billions of habitable planets orbiting around them. Given this, the probability of life having cropped up somewhere else in the universe at least once 
is so, so likely it's almost inevitable. Also, again, it's not like there's some kind of conspiracy that we have to reject God and reject sin and salvation. There's just no evidence for its existence. Do you actively want not to believe in unicorns? Are you rejecting unicorns? I don't want to not believe in God. I just don't. So it's okay to teach in science classes life could arise by aliens, but not okay to even consider biblical creation. Oh, we've considered it. Look, Ken, if you could offer some compelling scientific evidence for the existence of God, then we'd probably include it in the science classroom because that's where it would belong. But until that happens, you can't expect us to try and teach the ideas in Genesis in a science classroom. It just won't hold up. The more that culture rejects God, the more that anything goes. And then some Bible quote. Okay, if this is true, then why are our prisons filled with religious people? In fact, atheism is one of the lowest demographics within prisons. Answer to gender and bathroom issue. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. Male and female seems pretty gender fluid to me. Atheists believe that there is no God or there are no gods. It's their belief, blind faith belief, a religion. No, I don't. I just don't actively believe that there is a God. Atheists assert there is no supernatural. That's their belief, their religion. No, I don't. I just don't actively say that it does exist. Atheists believe death is the end. When you're dead, that's it. That's a belief, a religion. No, I don't. It's a hat trick. Look, I'm just willing to admit that I don't know what happens after we die for certain. What I do know, however, is that it's not some kind of eternally supervised tea party with all of your dead relatives. Mother Teresa was made a saint? According to the Bible, all Christians are saints. You do know that Hitler was a Christian, right? Does that mean he's a saint too? Generations of kids in public schools are taught that they evolved by natural processes. They're animals, no supernatural. Death is the end. Sad. Okay, two things. Firstly, it's really not that sad. The fact that we're all connected to every single living thing on the planet is really unifying. And secondly, even if it was true that evolution was a really sad reality with no hope, unfortunately, that doesn't really hold any bearing on whether it's true or not. You know what else is sad? Cancer but I'm not going to use the fact that I don't like it as evidence that it therefore doesn't exist. All humans are descendants of Adam and Eve, all one race, one family. All are sinners and all need to judge behaviour against God's word. You want to talk about sad realities? I think everybody is a sinner kind of tops the bill. For those believing the evolution religion, evolution is responsible for all disease and all suffering and death is the end. Religion with no hope. What? Okay, let's say evolution isn't true and that God does exist. That would mean that those things, the suffering and the pain and the death, would be attributable to him. Doesn't that make your religion by that logic a religion of no hope? And I think this kind of perfectly sums up why people can't really take Ken Ham seriously. Look Ken, if you're going to try and argue with some of the most intelligent minds on the planet, you might want to get your story straight first. But anyway, I think I'm going to leave it there for now. So I've been Alex O'Connor or Cosmic Skeptic. You can find me on social media here. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.